everybody! Welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Ayra, and this is our 10,000 subscriber special. First of all, I want to say thank you so much for 10,000 subscribers. While numbers are great and all, what I'm really celebrating today is that this is an amazing miniature community that we have built here together. You guys are such a kind and creative bunch. It makes my job every day working on miniatures and making these videos for you extremely rewarding. So to say thank you, I have created this tutorial for a 1930s icebox. I made this stove for my 5,000 subscriber special and you all really seem to enjoy it. And I asked you guys what you wanted me to make next and you said a fridge to match the stove. So I did my research and I came up with the pattern for this little guy. He may look easy, but I'm telling you that hardware is a little bit of a challenge. I have made this pattern completely free for you. You can find all the links in the description box below. I am making it available in JPEG form, PDF form, and new and improved SVG form. And if you are someone who uses a cutting machine, you will now be able to use the SVG file for that purpose. You can cut this miniature out instead of having to do it by hand. Now, if you're not quite sure how SVGs work and you're interested in that, I'm going to leave a link to Miniatures Made by Cricketers. Miniatures Made by Cricketers, and it is a Facebook page, and uh, Lisa, who helps run that page, she is going to do a little instruction on how to use that information for your uses. I do not have a ton of knowledge about it because I use a Silhouette Cameo and I use Silhouette Files, but if you do know how to use those, those are going to be made available to you. I tried my hardest to make these little guys compatible so they could work in a kitchen together and who knows by 100,000 subscribers we could have an entire kitchen set. One thing before we get started, I do want to let you know that the hardware on this piece is difficult. Uh, so I want us all together, we're just going to take a deep breath in and a deep breath out and we're going to keep doing that for however long it takes us to make these hardware pieces, uh, but they are the star of the Icebox show. Without it, it's pretty plain. However, you could create it to where the doors don't open and just glue the hardware on the front. It's up to you, but I did make it to where you can open and close it, and at the very end, I show you how to make a block of ice to go inside your Icebox. I really hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. It is my gift to you to say thank you so much for 10,000 subscribers. To get started, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have downloaded the patterns, whether you do JPEG or PDF. This is what they are going to look like, and if you do download either one of those, you're gonna see that it has red lines. All the red lines are ones you are going to want to cut. I do highly suggest you also transfer the letters and the black lines, um, like the ones on pieces Q and P, onto your pieces so that you don't get confused later on in the project. You should have two sheets. The first one is going to be for mat board and the second one is going to be used for cardstock. I also suggest that you change out and get a brand new blade in your X-Acto knife. I am going to be cutting these by hand. I did mention you can use a cutting machine for these. My machine does not cut mat board very well, so I just have the machine draw on to the mat board and I am going to be cutting these out by hand. If you are going to be using a paper pattern and tracing them on, I just suggest that you again transfer those letters on. It really helps you you know which piece that we are working on at what time and it also helps which direction they go in. I'm going to be taking all these little pieces and putting them to the side. I'm going to show you each piece as we begin to work on it. Just make sure there are some small pieces so get them wrangled so they don't disappear on you. Because I cut each of these by hand, I am just going to take a moment and sand the sides to make sure they're as flat as possible. Because this is a very square, rectangular piece, I want to make sure that they go together with 90 degree angles, and so I'm just trying to get my cuts as flat as possible, and I'm just using a file on the inside of this piece A. We're going to start with pieces I, Q, P, J, and H. 
and I'm going to be using tacky glue to put all of these together. We're going to start with Q and I'm just going to put glue on one side of that piece and it is going to be glued onto the face of I. And I want to make sure that those lines are facing inwards. This is going to show us where to put some shelf supports and so that's why those lines are very important. I'm going to lay it on my mat and just make sure that I'm getting this piece as straight as possible, making sure that I have a 90 degree angle. Now I'm going to take piece P and follow the same steps. Again, I want those lines to face on the inside so I know exactly where I'm going to be putting my shelves. This is what I have so far. Next I'm going to take piece J and this should fit perfectly on the face of I and between P and Q. I'm going to put glue on three sides and make sure that I glue that piece in. Next I'm going to take part H and follow the same exact steps. J and H should be the exact same size and shape but one goes on the bottom and one goes on the top. Again, I'm going to try my best to make sure that I have really good glue coverage but that it's not seeping out all over the place. I want to keep all of my connections really tight. This is what we have so far. This is going to be the body of our fridge. Next I'm going to have L and the two K pieces. I'm going to put glue on the side of L and this is going to line up with the bottom line on one of the pieces marked K. It doesn't matter which one because they're the same and you should be able to line the bottom of piece L with the line on the bottom. You should be able to just barely see that line. I laid it on my mat to make sure that it dried at a 90 degree angle and then I'm going to take my other piece marked K and I'm going to glue my two K pieces back to back. This way I can still see those lines that are marking where our shelves need to go. I like having K doubled up in the middle because it is the middle support for our ice box and so it will just make our box just a little bit stronger. So this is the piece you should have with L and K. Before we glue that in, I want you to grab all the pieces that look like this. There should have been an M marked next to them on the pattern, but they were too small to actually put M on the pieces. These are going to be shelf supports. Basically they're going to be glued on and then later when we make a icebox shelf, they're going to rest on top of these pieces. I am going to line them up with the bottom of the M piece. Um, sitting on top of that line. So again, I should be able to see just a little part of that line underneath the piece. There are three places for you to glue these on. Two on one side and then one of them is on the other side above the piece marked L. And this is what you should have. Before we glue that piece in, we're going to add the same M pieces to the inside. You have three of them and then you're going to leave the bottom one on the left blank because that's where we're going to line up piece L. This is going to be our center support and it's now making our three different compartments within the fridge. So I'm going to use tacky glue and glue in my KL piece so that I have a very solid body for my ice box. Now we're going to start working on the doors. The doors consist of pieces B, C, D and E, F, G and the E, F, G pieces are slightly bigger but you cut the B, C and D pieces out of the piece marked A so they should just barely fit in there. What I'm going to do is take the B, C, D pieces and I'm going to aggressively sand down the sides. This is because I want these pieces to fit very easily through the holes in A. This is going to be the inside of the fridge door and so I do not want it to get stuck. So now that I've sanded B, C and D, they should match up with the larger piece and so B matches up with E and what I'm going to do is put glue and center it so that this makes a door piece. It should consist of a larger piece and a smaller piece and I just want to center it as best as possible. I'm going to go through this process for each door. So F matches with piece C 
and G matches with piece D. You should be able to center them and have an equal amount of space around the edge. And at the end we should just have three pieces because we combined those six pieces together. These are going to be the doors that go on the front of our icebox. Now we're going to pull out part A and make sure that they fit really well into those pieces. If it's difficult for you to get the pieces back in, that means you probably did not sand the smaller parts of the doors enough. Now we're going to round off the edges of the doors. This is going to give them a really nice transition and a finished look on each edge. So here you can see the rounded part of the door versus the more square part of the door. And I think it just gives it a really nice finish. And we will be continuing to round the edges like this on the outside of the ice box as well, once it's all glued together. So now you can see all the pieces fit nice and snug into A, but not too snug to where we can still open them pretty easily. Now I'm going to take the large piece that I already made and I'm just going to sand down the front of it to make sure I don't have any high places that keep the glue when I put part A. I'm gonna glue part A in just a second. Um, oh, first I'm actually, I'm gonna paint the inside. <laughs> Very important step. I wanna make sure that I paint the inside before I put part A onto the face of the ice box because it will be more difficult to get into the corners once that piece is on. I'm going to be using a light cream for the inside of my ice box, but whatever you want to do. Um, I think it would also be really cool done in like a metallic color. So now I'm able to put part A onto the face of the ice box and I'm going to glue that down and that's why previously I sanded it just a little bit to make sure I had a nice even surface to glue part A onto. Now we have a finished ice box body, which is pretty exciting. I'm going to again, like I said earlier, round out the edges. There's going to be quite a bit of sanding in this because the more you sand this piece, the more it's going to have a metal finish. Obviously we're making this out of paper, so you want to do a lot of sanding to get as flat and even a surface as possible. I am noticing that I do have some ridges where some of the joints are, so I'm going to be using some joint compound. You can also use wood filler for something like this. Anything Thing that's meant to fill gaps and I'm going to use a small spatula to take some of that and I'm going to put it anywhere that I feel like there is just a little bit of a ridge. This is so I can have what I was mentioning earlier a very very smooth surface. If this was a manufactured metal piece it would be extremely smooth. I can also use my finger to smooth that out and then again I hit it with a little bit of sandpaper to make sure it is as, just as smooth as I can possibly get it. Now that I'm happy with the body of the icebox, I'm going to put parts N and O together to create the legs. I tried to make these where they would match the look of the stove that I made for my 5000 subscriber special. Some of them are going to face forward, some of them are going to face back, um, so don't get confused on that. Um, but each leg consists of an N and an O glued together. You need to glue part O to the back of N to create this Y looking foot. Once you have those pieces created, you can glue them onto the edge of the bottom of the ice box. I will twirl it around so that you can see how all the letters, if you did um, copy the letters over, um, how the letters look so you can see how I put it together, but not all of your letters are going to face out, so don't let that confuse you if you're going through this process. Some of them will face in, some will face out. I also used a little bit of gel super glue to the back of the legs just to give them a little bit more sturdiness. And um, I'm going in again with the spackle and some sanding for the legs to get them as smooth as possible. 
Now we're going back to the doors and it is time to paint them. I am going to be painting them a light cream color similar to the inside of the ice box. And then I'm going to be trying to match this as best as possible again to the stove so it can be used in a similar scene. So I'm using this vintagey looking teal and I'm going to be doing this all over the body of the ice box. So the doors are going to be the light cream and the body of the ice box is going to be this teal color. I really love that vintage furniture used to be so colorful and I think nowadays our furniture is so, or at least our kitchen appliances are so boring. Where, where, where did all the fun colors go? These are so fun. If you guys want to know what I mixed to create this color, it was a Caribbean blue with a uh, something fruit, some kind of fruit citrus uh, green. <laughs> so it was a little bit more blue than it was green. On the inside of the doors, I wanted to make it look like there was some insulation, obviously because this is an ice box using an actual ice cube, there needs to be some insulation. So I am using, um, the way I always make metal, I'm using a dark gray first as my first layer of paint, and then I'm going to go over it with a metallic silver. Metallic silver paint is typically very translucent and so you need a color underneath it for it to really look like it is some kind of metal. So I'm going to do this on each door. You also want to keep making sure that your doors fit into the ice box openings because as you add layers of paint you can create um, an issue if it gets a little bit too snug it may be hard to open and close your doors. If that happens just sand it down a little bit. On the inside of the doors it doesn't matter as much how good your paint looks. Now we're on to the cardstock sheet and this is where I want you to stop and take a deep breath because things are about to get real fiddly. You want to grab the pieces marked on the pattern as ice box shelf frames and there's going to be six of these but we're going to glue them together to where there's only three so two of them are going to glue together. This just makes the paper a little bit stronger and I'm gluing them together with tacky glue. Once they're glued together, I'm going to grab these ornament hooks, and the reason I'm using this is because the wire is just a little bit thinner than a paperclip wire, and I thought it would look better for scale. If you just have some thin wire, there isn't anything special about these, I just liked the thickness of the wires. I am having to straighten them out just a little bit, you want to make sure that your wire is straight. What I'm going to do is cut them to be the same length as the square, and I'm going to cut four to go across um, the first layer. There's going to be two layers of wires, so I need four of them to go across on this first layer. And they're just going to be the same length as the square. And then I'm going to use my gel super glue to make sure that they stay in place. Again, like I said, this can be a little bit fiddly and watch out for super gluing your fingers. So the first layer of wires should look like this. And then I cut nine more that were the exact same length. I'm going to take my gel super glue and just run it along the length of each one of the four wires that were my first layer. And then I'm going to use pliers to grab the um, one of the other nine wires and just start laying them on top. And you don't have to use nine, you can use less than that or more than that. Whatever looks right to you to be a um, some kind of refrigerator shelf rack. Just they have to be close enough together that you could actually put miniatures on that shelf and that they wouldn't fall through the openings. The gel super glue does give you a little bit of work time as opposed to liquid super glue and it does kind of like liquid super glue would drip down and the gel super glue stays there so that's why I suggest the gel super glue. 
Once those have dried, give it a good amount of drying time, like an hour or so. I am going to paint the white paper, and the reason I'm painting this afterwards is because if there are any glue joints, I am going to be able to paint over those, and it ends up kind of looking like a little weld wherever the um, wires were welded onto the paper. And um, I'm again using my same process of doing a gray base layer and then I'm using the metallic silver on top of the gray to give it a silver look. I'm making three of these shelves, but if you decide to do the ice block, you really only need to make two of them. And the way you put them in is just turn them onto a diagonal using some pliers, put them in, and they should fit perfectly onto the shelf supports that we put in there earlier. I am going to glue my two shelves on the right in, but I'm leaving my shelf on the left removable in case I decide I want to have the ice block inside. So this one will stay removable, and I will probably store it in the bottom part of that cavity. Now we're going to be working with the pieces marked ice box trim on your pattern. These are going to go around the upper part of the ice box. What we're going to start with are these long pieces and um, the two long pieces and the two medium pieces all need to be folded in half. This is a little bit tricky but if you have some kind of accurate um, creasing type mechanism it might make it a little bit easier but I'm just folding them in half by hand then before I apply them I am again doing my silver process with the base coat of gray and then a top coat of silver and I'm going to do that on all the pieces in this section on the template so now I should have four long folded pieces and four little maple leaf type shape pieces the long pieces should fit perfectly along the front and the back edge of the ice box. I'm just going to use tacky glue to put those down. I'm going to do the front and the back pieces first and then I will do the side pieces. You can probably just leave them like this if you decide that you don't like how the maple leaf details look on the edges, which I will show you in a second. Um, they do cover all the way to the edge if everything, if all, the template's printed correctly. Everything should fit perfectly, so if you like the plain look without the corner pieces, then you can just leave it looking like this, which is a very simple yet effective look. Now to use the little corner clamp pieces, what you first want to do is make sure the points are pointing frontwards away from the fridge and then you're going to push down the sides so that it clamps over the side and once it's glued it should look like this and you have that middle point pointing forwards. I'm going to do that on all four pieces because before I push down that point I want to make sure that it's completely dry otherwise it could push up the side pieces. Once you know that the glue is dry all you want to do is add some more glue to that pointy piece that was sticking out the front and then push it down. This is how it looks. I have mixed feelings on this effect, but if you like it, I think it works for this piece. Um, and it was first one of these I'd actually tried printing through um, a pattern, but uh, let me know what you guys think. So now we're going to be putting the doors on and starting to work on the hinges. Again. <sighs> Don't be afraid to allocate a couple days to making the hardware itself because it can take that long. Um, so we have two pieces here you're going to find in the hinges needed section. One has a pointed side and one has a flat side. The pointed one is on top and the flat side is on the bottom. And actually the one that is on the flat side needs to be flipped downwards so that the straight line that comes out from it is on the bottom part of the hinge. And each of them should have a little piece that is going to be glued on the top. We're going to start with the piece that has the pointed side and these are the pieces that are actually going to connect to the door. There should be two pieces per door and I like to spread them out and so I know which way they should be facing. 
This little piece that we're going to glue on top does two things. It helps strengthen the hinge and it helps us remember which part of the hinge is the top. So when we take it off of the cabinet, we don't have to remember that. So I'm going to glue one of these onto each one of the hinges. And as you can see, I have a top piece on top of the bottom piece. And each one of these, that long strip that's sticking out should be on the top part of the hinge. I'm going to be using paper clips to make these hinges and what I need to do is cut the straight parts of the paper clip and right now it doesn't matter how long it is we just want to make it long enough so that we can handle it so I'm just going to make sure I cut six of these straight pieces and we are going to be gluing these to the back side of the hinge so once you take your hinge make sure that you flip it over otherwise this can get really Really confusing and you are going to take one of your paper clip pieces and you are going to super glue it to the very end of that long strip of paper at the best you can a 90 degree angle and let it dry completely if you don't let it dry completely this next part is going to be very frustrating I'm again using some gel super glue so that I know that it gets stuck into the super glue. I don't want a big glob of it, just enough so that I know that the paper is going to glue to the metal. And these are how my hinges are looking after I've glued all of the paper clips on. And what I'm going to start to do is bend and break the fibers in the paper so that I can roll this paper clip piece up backwards so I'm rolling it um, like toward away from the front of the hinge if that makes sense so the front of the hinge where we glue that piece of paper I'm rolling away from there so that I will have a hinge piece that is kind of behind the face of the hinge I'll give you a close-up of what that looks like and I used a little bit of super glue to make sure that that stays in place this is how it looks on the door and later on I will trim the paper clip part so don't worry about how long that is. But this is how all the pieces should look once they have been curled up. I am going to once again use one of Heather Tracy's ways that she does things and I'm going to be using liquid super glue to harden each one of these pieces. Because this is paper it is prone to tearing and ripping and by using this liquid super glue which kind of soaks into the fibers it is going to harden this piece and give it a much longer shelf life and this is probably one of the best ways I can think to make it outside of actually making metal hinges which I don't know how to do. Again, I'm going to be using my same method of making something look like metal by painting a base coat of gray and then adding a top coat of silver. This is what it looks like afterwards. I found these clamps really helpful to hold onto the pieces while I worked on them. So now that I've made all of the top part of the hinges I'm going to be working on the bottom part of the hinge which is that piece that we saw before that has the flat side so where my thumbnail is that's the flat side that I'm talking about and it is actually going to glue onto the the green or the greenish blue part of the ice box I'm gonna lay these out again and like I said that long strip of paper should be on the bottom side this time these pieces also have a little extra piece that we're going to glue on the top part. This helps us remember which is the top part of the hinge so that when we take it off the fridge, we don't forget that this is the top part and it does help um, strengthen it just a little bit. So I'm going to glue all the top pieces onto the hinges and then we are going to go to the next step which is probably one of the most difficult. We are going to be rolling this hinge up 
without gluing the paper clip to the paper. So we can use the paper clip to roll it up with, but we want to make sure we don't glue it in there because this hinge needs to interact with the paper clip we glued to the other part of the hinge. So again, I'm just breaking the fibers and getting that paper ready to roll the way I want it to. I did find that adding a little bit of tacky glue was helpful to me to get it rolled up. It was again very fiddly. So so, but it's possible, just a little bit difficult. And then you do want to secure it with some super glue. But this is how it looks, and then um, how it looks once it's paired with its other part. So the top part of the hinge that we made first was is the silver part, and the bottom part of the hinge is the white part. And you should have six of these, and this is how they should look. So we are going to cut off the paper clip and it will be about as long as that piece of paper because that part of the hinge is going to go into the bottom part. Now we are going to harden this again with super glue like we did the first one, but this one just make sure that you don't get any super glue inside of the hole where the paper clip needs to go. Otherwise you won't be able to get your hinge together. So again, here are the two pieces. I painted the bottom part of the hinge with the matte gray and the top part that we made first is still with silver just so that you could see where they glue. So the matte gray pieces glue onto the frid, the ice box body and the silver hinges, hinge part, <laughs> oh, I'm getting mixed up. The silver hinge part glues to the door. Now we're going to be working on the closures for the ice box and these bottom 12 pieces are going to be glued on top of one another so you should end up with just six pieces and then these top pieces are going to be rolled up well just the ones above the hexagonal shapes those are going to be rolled up into very small pieces big enough for a um, paper clip to go through. I figure if you find a bead that works you might be able to use those and that might save you a lot of grief but they need to be glued on horizontally to this hexagonal shape and you're going to have three of these. Make sure when you're gluing on that you don't get any glue again in the hole where the paper clip needs to go. There should be three of these because we're going to have three closures one for each door and this is where they will end up. These pieces are done a little bit differently. You're going to take one of the long pieces and fold it in half and then go ahead and glue it because that'll help it stay put. I'm just gluing this with tacky glue at the moment. And then once that's glued, you're going to fold it over the paper clip and then press it really tight with your fingertips so that it makes a loop over the paper clip. This is going to leave a hole so that the paper clip can fit. And then you want to super glue those two ends together and you should have a piece like this left. These pieces are going to be glued onto the smaller pieces that you just glued together because there's two of those little tiny, tiny rectangles glued on top of each other. I put this piece back onto a paper clip. Um, it just made it easier to glue on. Like I said, these are super tiny. So anyway, that made it easier, I just went for it. And then you should have a piece that looks like this, and this is going to be the other part of the closure that goes with the hex, is it hexagonal? Is that the six sided? Anyway, those pieces that we already made, they should match up. The first pieces we made go on the door, and the second piece that we made actually goes onto that center line that goes down the middle of the ice box. Now you may have noticed that my hinges were just a little bit too big for the ice box and so what I ended up doing was just um, taking them off. You can use an X-Acto knife to do this. I just clamped them off with a wire cutter but I decided to leave them in the design how they were because you could probably use the hinges for something else if you wanted to and I liked how they looked. So I went ahead and hardened those pieces and painted them silver like I have everything else. And in order to glue them on accurately, I'm going to go ahead and put them onto a paper clip and then um, glue those on at the same time. 
Here's a closer view of that for you so you can see how I did that. As you can see, that second part of the latch we created dips down a little bit further. So just um, making them line up is really important while you're gluing them on. And also make sure that you don't have too much glue because you could accidentally glue your doors closed if you're not careful. Also, bonus points to anyone else who makes these hinges while an animal chews on their foot. <laughs> so this is what the piece looks like with all of the hardware finally applied. You want to make sure continually that your doors still open easily. And I'm really liking how it looks along with the interior pieces and I just think it's really coming together. And um, I mean, it does take a little bit for me to get it open and it's not perfect. And I think that's what gives it that handmade look. Um, but so far I'm liking it. I hope you guys are too. So now to make some little, what looks like nails, sorry for my head being in the picture. I'm using a very spiky tool to just press down into the paper and it makes it look like there's some tiny nails holding these pieces on the very small detail, something you can leave out if you're not interested in that. But I do like to add, if I'm gonna put this much detail into the hardware, I do like to add some little hint of nails of how the hardware is applied to the piece. And then I did add some to the top as well. So now I'm going to be making the actual closure pieces and I'm just using that same uh, paper clip metal that I used before. I'm going to use two clamps and just make it go up at one end. This is just something that I saw in my reference photo that I was looking at. I'm going to make three of these for our three closures and just very carefully move them into their slots. It is not the easiest thing to do because of how small they are, so I don't suggest this if you're making this for a small child to play with in a dollhouse, but it does give a very realistic look because of how small and delicate the pieces are. These two pieces are from the Icebox nameplate part of the template, and I have two because I think originally I was thinking about gluing them on top of each other to give it some more thickness, but I think that one layer of cardstock is probably more accurate, so if you wanted to have a couple nameplates, you could have two different ones. I just decided to stick with one. I painted it with my same silver process and glued it on. You could also probably print out a nameplate if you wanted to actually have a word there. I'm using matte Mod Podge to make a final surface or a final finish on this piece. I probably would suggest a spray finish, but I'm doing Mod Podge because that's what I used on my stove and I wanted the finishes to match as much as possible, but it can be a little scary. You don't want to, you want to make sure that you don't get it on the hinges or any place where it might stick and especially not inside the door frames because that creates thickness. So I do suggest a spray finish, but I use Mod Podge. Now, when researching ice boxes, guess what? They use real blocks of ice and they usually go in this large cavity up here. I thought it was in the bottom, but they actually go in the bigger spot and the bottom is reserved for items that you want to keep really cold like milk, dairy type stuff. So I thought it'd be really fun to make an ice block for this place. Like I said, you can use the third rack or you can make an ice block. I'm going to be using Sculpey um, polymer clay, amazing mold putty, UV resin, and some hot glue to make this ice block. I'm going to start off with some polymer clay that I'm going to hand shape into a rectangle type shape. Why can't I ever think of the 3D term? A rectangular prism, a rectangular prism. And I want to hand shape it. I don't want to cut it with a blade because I want it to look a little bit melty and that means it's not going to have really crisp edges. Then I'm going to be using my two part mix mold putty and I just mix this in equal parts until it is one solid color. By the way, I already baked the clay. Then I'm going to take my mold putty and I'm going to just form it around this rectangular prism to get the shape that I would like. The reason I'm doing this is so that I can pour my hot glue into a mold. And this is going to sit for about 20 minutes to cure and then I should have a mold. And I'll just keep that 
uh, polymer clay for something else. I'm sure I'll need a uh, blue rectangular prism for something in the future. But for now, I'm going to be using this mold to create my ice block. I'm going to be using hot glue because as opposed to resin, it's fairly cheap and a lot of the ice would not have been very clear because it was utilitarian ice. It was not ice that you would probably be drinking or putting in your um, food or your drinks, I'm guessing. So I'm not too worried about it being clear. I just let it, I pumped it into the mold and I let it cool down for a good 10-15 minutes. And what we have here is a block of hot glue. Now it does kind of look frosted, so you could use it like this if you wanted to, but I want mine to look a little bit melty. And so I'm going to be using UV resin and putting it onto the surface of this to make it look like it is melting. And I'll show you the difference between these so you can decide whether you want to go the extra UV resin step. But it's pretty easy. You just go one side at a time and just put out a little bit of UV resin onto whichever side you're working on and uh, make sure you cover it as best as you can without it going over the side otherwise it will drip onto your mat and then you just hit it with the UV light and it will cure pretty quickly. So here you can see I've done two a few sides with the UV resin versus just the plain hot glue. I ended up doing the whole thing with UV resin and putting it into my project. So here is the final piece. You can see in the right side we have two shelves ready for some refrigerator items. And in the bottom we have a place for cold storage such as milk and cream and butter. And in the top left we have our gigantic ice cube. And um, it's hard to see when the light's not on it, but it does look a little bit like it's getting melty. Again, this this is not perfect. This is a miniature made out of paper, but I really had fun putting this together and I hope you enjoyed it. I really put a lot of time and effort into this because I wanted to make something for you guys to show just how much I appreciate your support. That's it for today's tutorial. Please check out all the links in the description box below. I will link to some materials. I will link all the files that you need. I will leave that link to the Facebook group that can help you with the SVG files if you're interested. And I hope if you do make this that you would tag me on Instagram at Bentley House Minis. I always love seeing what you guys create. I hope you all have an amazing week and I will see you in the next one. Bye! I wore my big celebration glasses, they're super shiny.